I'm finally starting to feel better, which is really good timing because we have the Indianapolis Regionals coming up this weekend and we gotta start talking about it. Hey everybody, Nick from Nine Card TCG, and today we're going to be talking about 10 decks. Are these the best 10 decks in the game? Uh, some of them probably aren't, some of them are definitely my opinion, but we're going to talk about the some of the best decks in the game and ones that you are likely to see popping up at things like Indy or Jersey regionals that are coming up very, very quickly. Before we get into that, I do want to say that all of these deck lists I, I pulled off the Limitless page and the individuals who piloted those decks, I do have a full list in the video description as well, as well as a link to Limitless itself so you can check out these decks and others for yourself. Before we go any further as well, if you haven't already, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, leave a like and a comment, all that ton of stuff tells YouTube this is a good channel and other people should watch it. If you're in the market for some TCG accessories, I am now affiliated with Dragon Shields, which means you can use the link in the video description to get yourself some awesome Dragon Shield matte sleeves. They're the only ones I use to show up to regionals looking and feeling like a pro. And uh, if you use that, by the way, I get a kickback, which means I can make more and better videos for you guys. Lastly, there is a uh, join button if you want to become a channel member. You can click that to see all the different perks you get, but none of that's ever required. Just you being here is enough for me. I did forget to mention that there are links to 9card deck friend and my Discord all in the video description as well. Now, with all that out of the way, we're going to head over, I guess, to just the internet because we're going to be looking at some deck lists. And we will be going in ascending order, so from 10 all the way up to number 1. Again, keep everything here with a little bit of grain of salt. These, this is super influenced by my opinion. And it's also influenced by what I see doing well at some big tournaments. So number 10, we have Rapid Strike Malma. This deck has kind of fallen off. It did really, really well in some European regionals like Liverpool and then hasn't seen much success after. It's a really good deck and it has some really high damage output potential, but one of the big issues is another deck we're going to see on this list, and that is Rapid Strike Urshifu, and that can make this really difficult. Even if you do throw a Manaphy in there, Manaphy does two things. One, it's a non-Rapid Strike card, and it takes up bench space, so that's kind of two right there, and three... Uh, your opponent can kind of just play around that mana fee, boss it up KO pretty easily, and then uh, there's a lot of stuff on the bench here that can get like quick shooting yoga looped pretty easily. And so, you know, because of that, this deck has really taken a hit and is kind of now at the bottom of the most competitive list and some might not even put it in top 10 at all i still think it's a pretty good list and one of the reasons i, I have it in here is because it is so budget friendly you can buy this entire list for like 40 bucks and so if you're a new player or you've been out of the game for a while you, you know you can just jump back in with this super good deck and it's it's really consistent and you like i said you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some vive stars and i've had people one shot of 320 health VMAX. Uh, you, you know, it's just it's very, very good when it's going, but some of the other decks in the format make it a little hard. So, moving on to number nine, I guess, is Arceus Duraladon. And now, this is a slightly different build of Arceus Duraladon for two reasons. One, you might notice the Galarian Zapdos V. That is something that is really, really different. And it's probably for the, and not probably, it's most likely for the mirror matches, or just Arceus matches in general. Maybe something like a Gengar, maybe something like a Jolteon, something where they might not necessarily rely on special energy, but still might be fighting weak. You can go ahead and take pretty big knockouts with that Zapdos, discard their special energies in the process, uh, which is a little counterintuitive for what Duraludon does. Remember, Duraludon's ability Skyscraper prevents all damage done to Pokemon when they have, or done to Duraludon, when they have any special energy attached. So if your opponent has a Arceus V-Star with a double turbo energy, it can no longer hit Duraludon. So if you use Zapdos's V attack and, you know, if for some reason you don't KO that uh, Arceus, it is a Dunsparce in play, you get rid of that double turbo energy. Well, now they can just start attaching energies and it, it, it just gets a little weird. It's, it's slightly counterintuitive, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. 
but something to keep in mind. The other thing that's interesting about this deck is that it only has one single strike mustard. Now, you might notice the weird Duraladon count 2Vs, 3 v maxes. usually it's the other way around. But this deck tries to get around Duraladon Vs by just going straight into Duraladon VMAX using Single Strike Mustard. So Single Strike Mustard is one of those cards that you can only play if it's the last card in your hand. And also, side note, you need a free bench space. But if it is the last card in your hand and you have a free bench spot, then you can just go ahead and play Mustard, search your deck for any Single Strike card you want, and put it directly into play. And Duraludon VMAX is a, sing is a Single Strike Pokemon, which means you can skip the evolution and go straight to the VMAX and that does two things, and we'll talk about those in a second. After you get to search your deck for a single strike Pokemon with Mustard, you then draw five cards. Keep in mind that you don't have to get a Pokemon when you play single strike Mustard. You can just search your deck as long as you meet the it's the last card in your hand and there's a freeze bench spot conditions and you search your deck, you now get to draw five cards. So if all three Duraldon, say two's in the discard, one's prized, your opponent technically doesn't know that um, you don't have Duraldons that you can get, so you're able to still search and draw five. Uh, the the whole thing about this deck is kind of just walling your opponent out. Um, that you're able to just use G-Max Pulverization, which goes through opposing Pokemon abilities and effects, so you're just taking 220 constantly. You're going to use those Arceuses to power up that Duraldon so that you can use G-Max Pulverization, you kind of only want to put one Arceus in play because the plan is to make your opponent go through an Arceus and then two V-Maxes. Then you're going to make them take eight prizes and they're going to be eight difficult prizes considering that Arceus V-Star has 280 health, the Raladon has 330. You're playing some big charms in there and they're just big Pokemon and Special Energy is very, very common in this format. So it can be a little hard for your opponent to really put good damage onto a Duraludon. So why do we want to skip the Duraludon V and go straight into the VMAX? Well, some decks play Echoing Horn. And Echoing Horn is an item card that lets you take a Pokemon from your opponent's discard and put it directly onto the bench. So now if your op opponent plays something like Echoing Horn, puts a Duraludon V into play, and now Path of the Peak comes in, hard coat the ability of Duraludon no longer takes effect. Well, now it's just a 220 health Pokemon that it can get boss KO'd pretty easily. So we want to avoid that. And that's why I'm a little surprised about the Zapdos V. If it gets discarded with an Ultra Ball, Quick Ball, Research, or something like that, it is going to be, you know, a target for Echoing Horn, a 200, uh, 200 flat health. And Mew would love to take advantage of that. So... It's a really interesting deck. Crystal Cave helps a little bit of healing, um, but it's starting to actually see a little bit more success recently in some online tournaments and, and uh, a little bit of IRL play, but uh, it did fall off a little bit in favor once people started like constantly Sharon cycling, Sharon care cycling, um, and they get that one Pokemon that has the special energy out of play, and now they're just constantly hitting you for 220 and uh, taking up trades. It can be a little bit annoying. So that's why Duraldon hasn't seen super much, uh, a, a, like a ton of success in play, but starting to make a little bit of a comeback. Number eight, or I guess, yeah, number eight is Arceus Beedrill. And now this is a really, I love the Beedrill engine or package. This also uses single strike mustard. So all, everything we talked about mustard still applies, but now we get Beedrill. And this Beedrill is really cool because it has an attack persist sting for just one grass energy if your opponent's pokemon has any or your opponent's active pokemon has any special energy attached to it it's just instantly knocked out which means your opponent is playing mu v max and they have a fusion strike energy attached to their active mu v max and they take a knockout on your arceus well guess what if you have a beedrill in play you just promote it and you take three free prizes it's really cool it's a really good card you do have to kind of play around the mustard meaning you have to play your hand so that you can make Mustard plays happen. Duraludon, you don't have to do it as much. You can evolve into the VMAX if you need to, and you, and you can with the two Vs. But here, there are no Weedles and there are no Kakunas, so we cannot get the Beedrill out anyway except for playing Mustard. So 
It's, it's actually one of my favorite decks to play at the moment, not this exact list, although I did do a video on this pretty recently. Arceus Beedrill decks with some other stuff is like my go-to at the moment. I have a ton of fun. It's super, super satisfying. And if you haven't tried this one, definitely give it a go and be cautious. If you've seen Arceus and they play Mustard or there's Grass Energies, immediately start to think about Beedrill and be careful about those special energies because it comes out of nowhere sometimes and next thing you know your opponent's taking three prizes with a Beedrill and also by the way there are a fair amount of grass weak dark types things like Galarian Moltres V, Hoopa V, things like that where you can just Jet Spear, which is the other attack on Beedrill for just a single grass energy, it does 110 damage. And by the way, those Pokemon V all have 220, so with the weakness, you're hitting 220 for just one energy on a single prize Pokemon. It's uh, It can do some work. Number seven is a Hoopa Moltres variant. And again, you're just going to see a lot of the similar cards on Tele Online for Shady Dealings, so you can cherry pick cards you want with Shady Dealings. They do have to be trainers, but hey, what trainer... We, like, ha, you can get a lot of stuff with trainers. And so we have the Baby Moltres to put big damage out on things like Mew. We have Galarian Moltres to start powering it up and also take KOs on Dark Week Pokemon. Zapdos for the... Uh, fighting weak Pokemon, and then we have things like Hoopa, the baby Hoopa for, you know, Meloetta, Savos, Drizzles, things like that. Zigzagoon to help fix a little bit of math here and there. And then we have a Snowy form, cast form. You can use any cast form you want. For some reason, the community seems to really like the Snowy form. I don't really know why. It doesn't really make much of a difference. You're using it only for the fact that it is a basic one prize Pokemon with free retreat. Earlier versions of this use things like Galarian Weezing because it has Neutralize and Gas to turn off your opponent's abilities if it's in the active. It also used maybe things like Sableye because that severe poison that the Galarian, uh, Galarian Weezing does puts four damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon. And now Galarian, uh, the uh, Sableye V can come in and take some easy knockouts. You start to put damage with Hoopo, you put ping damage with, Galarian, with the uh, Quick Shooting Italian and you're able to take some big knockouts with Sableye. This list a little bit different, but it follows the same principle. Be careful about the number of two prize Pokemon you put into play. You're gonna take some early, your, your opponent's gonna take some early prizes, but that's okay because the whole idea is to come back and rally with something like the Baby Galarian Moltres, take some really big up trades and win the game in the late stage. Now, this does kind of depend on things like Mew being really present in the meta, and you can see the addition of the Zapdos is really because of how prevalent Arceus is. And that's not a surprise considering how good Arceus is, but you are going to drop down a little bit in consistency because now you need that fighting energy. You need the Zapdos. It's an extra two prizer and it's, it's a little bit difficult at times, but it can work. Uh, and, uh, another issue with this deck, which is why it's a little on the lower side, is Rapid Strike Urshifu, again, is going to be able to really wreak havoc on a lot of your Pokemon. Knocking out your cast form, knocking out your Inteleon line, is it's, it's, this deck will crumble without being able to search the deck for different trainers like Clara, like Cynthia's, like Rescue Carry, whatever it is you're looking for. Uh, you really need it in these kind of decks, and so Rapid Strike Urshifu really exploits that and can make it a little difficult. Number six, Ice Rider Calyrax, and this is... A very middle of the road deck. It's not bad by any means, and it's not incredible by any means. It, it It's one of those things that it just does what it needs to do. And this one happens to have a Crobat V, which I find a little bit interesting. Sometimes you see a Luminion V, sometimes you don't see any or either, I should say. Uh, but again, Intelli Online, Ice Rider. One of the big issues with Ice Rider is that sometimes you find yourself in a locked loop of Melanie. So you have to Melanie because you discard your energies for Max Lance, and that's the only way you can attack the next turn. So knowing when uh, to ride the High King, knowing when to maybe attack with Aqua Bullet so that you don't have to constantly discard your energies and be forced into using Melanie each turn. Maybe you need to use a Research, maybe you want to use a Leon for bigger damage, because Max Lance with a Leon and a Choice Bug can hit for 310, and then you have Quick Shootings, all of a sudden you're hitting 330, you're able to knock out any Pokemon in the game, or Eternatus we don't really care about because no one's playing it, but 
You could still knock out an Eternatus with quick shooting if you hit 360 like that, but either way, the point remains that if you are forced to Melanie every turn because you're constantly discarding energies for Max Lance, well, uh, you get into that required that locked loop and you're never able to play your Leon to put yourself over that edge and take some KOs that you might need to. And sometimes this happens with things like Arceus. If they have a big charm, now you're hitting them for 280. If you have your own big charm, maybe you're getting 300 if you have a quick shooting in play, but they're gonna have 310 health and they can cycle through those Sharon's Care. So now you're discarding energies, you're forced into a Melanie loop and you're not even really getting any prizes out of it. Even if you are getting a prize every other turn like that, um, which you, you they miss a, a, a loop one turn, they miss a, a Sharon's Care or something like that. You're still only getting two and they've been constantly putting 180 to 200 on, onto you and they're gonna get three. They're gonna win that, that prize race. Also, you are really dependent on not like, Sometimes you really don't want to start Ice Rider in the act if you kind of just want to sobble. So you can start powering up an Ice Rider, keep calling, something like that. Um, but it, it, again, nothing's really weak to it. Nothing's really strong against it. It's just very much, this is my game plan. This is what I'm going to do. And it, it gets results. It does well. Uh, people, I think, underestimate Ice Rider a little bit. It does run the uh, path to the peak to turn off things like Starbirth, to turn off... Uh, cross fusion uh, system or fusion strike system whatever genesect stability is it's going to turn off dire flame wings it's going to turn off uh the fighting instinct on zapto like it's a it's a good card and yeah you just kind of do what you need to but do practice knowing when you can and can't ride at a high king so that you can take knockouts appropriately halfway through the list at number five Halfway through the list at number five, we have Frank Persick's Whimsicott Biberall deck. And this is one that, do I think it is a top 10 deck? I think it's a really good deck. And I think it was a fantastic call for EUIC. Do I think it will continue to see the same levels of success? I think it might see a little bit less success. I think you'll see maybe some people pick it up because it's a non-dark weak psychic type. And it's... You know, Psychic is going to be strong against something like Rapid Strike Urshifu, which means you're able to take one shots on Rapid Strike Urshifu Vs. And also, you're able to stop them from attaching something like Rapid Strike Energy to their Pokemon with Trick Wind. So they can't attach tools, they can't attach special energies after you use Trick Wind. So you can really kind of slow them down and force them into the Raihan game. But they're going to attach Raihan uh, and then nothing right if they can't attach a special energy so you can kind of lock them out of games if you set up your attacks quickly enough it's a really it's a really good deck bbrl helps make it super consistent crobat's gonna help make it a little bit more consistent as well if just that added draw power crushing hammers and phantom waves to if they do get a rapid strike energy and in, into play before you're able to trick win maybe it's their turn one they see that whimsicott they say okay well i gotta get the rapid strike energy out before they start trick winding now you can go ahead and fan it away you can uh, cram it uh, uh crushing hammer it away and there you go experience share is going to help you set up your own other whimsicots a little bit faster i thought it was a great addition by frank this way you don't have to rely on raihan you can kind of rely on using things like avery to get rid of that bench you can rely on using marnie to reduce their hand size a lot of the intellion like the the Moltres, Hoopa, and Talion decks, and even Rappers like Urshifu kind of rely on decks not running Marning as much. So if you're not forced to use Raihan to power up another Whimsicott, you use the Experience Share instead. Now you can, when they get these big massive hands, you can just Marnie them down to four, throw the path down, hit, continue to hit with Trick Wind. Now they have a really small hand size, path is in play, and they can't attach tools or special energy, and you can kind of just slowly whittle them down to the point where they can't do anything. It's a really interesting deck. You can Avery their bench away, so uh, Rapid Strike, Valmar, Mew, uh, Urshifu, things that rely on having larger benches or full benches so that they can maximize their Sobbles and their um, you know, just whatever support Pokemon they have. Now they don't have them anymore. There you go. So Whimsicon, really good for the current meta. Are people going to be preparing for it? Absolutely, which is why I don't think it'll see 
as much success, but I do still think a good deck. Top four, we are in the cut, and it's a deck that I think people are a little bit overlooking. That is Subacune Ludicolo. It is a very, very good deck. Subacune being a two prize Pokemon. You throw a cape of toughness on there, 270 health or 260 health, whatever it is, it's very, very high. And you can hit for 220 very easily, plus something like Ludicolo brings you up to 220. You're in V Max territory. You do have a choice belt in there so that you can go over the 320 uh, limits if you need to. You gotta knock out like a Urshifu V Max or something like that. We do have those Echoing Horn that we mentioned before so that you can pull up a Crobat, take an easy two prizes, close out the game. <coughs> One of the decks that, one of the few decks that makes use of Cross Witcher is this deck because we, we again, you kind of sometimes get locked into that Melanie loop. Sometimes you can right hand, but most of the time you're looking to Melanie, uh, you know, onto a Suicune after it was knocked out or to get it set up so that you can start attacking. And now instead of you can still have that boss option you can send up a, uh, a sable or a low tad or something you know have your benched suicune you melanie to it and then you play your cross switchers and now you can pull up one of your opponent's pokemon that maybe you just played echoing horn on and there you go and now you can start taking big knockout so really really consistent deck it is a very very good do not sleep on it and I wouldn't be surprised if you see a couple, uh, you know, it's a nine round tournament, these regionals. So someone's going to be playing Suicune, I guarantee it. You might not see it, you personally, but I'll, I'll bet money someone brings it and maybe it doesn't even do that badly with it. It's, you know, it, it requires some really precise and proper sequencing, like a lot of the decks we're going to talk about uh, coming up. But if you have the reps in, if you've been playing the Suicune a lot, uh, or you're just really familiar with Inteleon engines in general, <laughs> you can do really well with this deck, and I think people are sleeping on it. All right, here it is. I think everyone kind of expected Mew to be up there in top three at the very least, and here it is. This particular Mew deck is a little different because it runs a Pumpkaboo. This one might not see as much play because there aren't as many Path to the Peaks in the format at the moment as there was initially to combat Mew. So you don't necessarily need the Pumpkaboo to get rid of a stadium because now that's one less Fusion Strike Pokemon in play and you're going to be drawing one less card. But the trade-off is that if your opponent does throw that path down, you could just discard, you could, you know, get that Pumpkaboo and there you go. You play the Pumpkaboo down, path's no longer a problem. You can continue to do what you need use your fusion strike systems that turn and uh you're away at the races you do only run two stadiums in this one and you're running double stadiums mew oftentimes runs three different stadiums this way they can offload them after turn after turn so a lot of times they'll run a rose tower a um an old cemetery and something like a training court to maybe get back their one or two basic psychic energies and they just you know Turn one, they'll, they won't throw it down first unless they absolutely have to. But let's say they play a stadium to get rid of Bump Path. Next turn, they would need to discard a card because they have to dig deep into the deck. And then they can play another stadium. If you have two Rose Towers, you're not able to offload that other Rose Tower. They're kind of relying on Path being a thing and your stadium is getting bumped. So think about that a little bit. Maybe you don't run two of the same stadiums. Maybe you run one of each. Maybe you don't run Pumpkaboo and run three stadiums. I will say... Searching for a Pokemon is very, very easy. Searching for a stadium, very, very hard. Now you do have Cramomatic, so if you flip ahead, you can find a stadium immediately and you don't really have to worry about that. Or, you know, you, you play the Pumpkaboo and you just bump the stadium as you need it. It's, it's totally up to you. I, I, I do think this list is gonna fall a little bit out of favor uh, for a different card. Maybe this is gonna go to another trainer maybe it's going to go to another energy um the, the, i do find the in, the inclusion of tool jammer a little bit different uh it's i don't know how much use they're getting out of tool jammer but this was a highly placed uh this list the person who piloted this list did really well in in their tournament so it must have some benefits to stop things like air balloons and and uh 
opposing choice belts, taking easier KOs on things. But yeah, either way, I mean, Mew is just, I think most people know what Mew does by now. It just draws super aggressively. It's very, very consistent because of its insane draw power so that you can just dig through almost half your deck in a turn or two. And that's not an exaggeration. You are very easily drawing through half your deck in two turns. Very easily. It's um, it's really good, and I hate it. Moving on to number two, the finalist. Or, and really, any of these any of these decks could serve you well. There are others we haven't talked about uh, before we talk about the number one deck will do it. So we'll talk about Arceus and Talion first and now this is a slightly different Arceus and Talion this one does have a Moltres to kind of help deal with Mew matchups a little bit easier it does have a Dunsparce and a Manaphy that because Urshifu is a thing Manaphy protects damage from your bench Pokemon and uh, Dunsparce is going to remove the fighting weakness from your Arceus or for really from all of any colorless Pokemon it gets rid of any weakness but in this case it's getting rid of fighting weakness from your colorless Pokemon and Starbirth is an incredibly good ability on Arceus V-Star. You can only use it once per game, but we can search our deck for any two cards we want and put them into our hands, which means we can cherry pick the exact things when we need it. We do run our own path so that we can throw the path down, stop Mar uh, the Mew decks from using their uh, Techno uh, the Fuse Cross, what a Techno Fusion Strike system. I'm losing it. Uh, you could stop opposing Arceus decks from using their Starbirth, whatever it may be, and you're just kind of consistently hitting anywhere between two, uh, 180 and 230, depending on how things are set up, but you're just slowly winning away. You have your own Sharon's Care, you have your Pal Pads, so that you can play your two Sharon's Care, Pal Pad them back, play them again, and you are just constantly cycling the Arceus and what does Pal Pad do? Okay, so Arceus V Star is 280 health, it gets hit for 220 damage. Let's say we're talking about Duraludon V Max, it hits for 220 damage. So the 280 health Arceus now has 60 health left. Well, Sharon's Care says that you can take a damaged callless Pokemon from the field and put it back into your hand, and all cards attached to it go with you. So that means you have a fresh Arceus V on the bench that you powered up with Trinity Nova because that's what Arceus V Star's attack does. You use Trinity Nova, you power up the benched Arceus V, and now you just go ahead and send up the Arceus V after using Sharon's Care. You can now evolve it. Now you got the V Star, you attach any tools, any energies, whatever, and then you bench the other Arceus V from the Sharon's Care. And then you just repeat that cycle over and over and your opponent's never taking prizes and you are constantly hitting them for, you know, like I said, somewhere between 180 and 230, depending on your individual setup. Usually 180 to 210 is like how, what you're often hitting with Arceus, but you can very easily hit 230. Um, super consistent, super powerful. It is a very, very good deck. One you are guaranteed to see um, uh, that these top three decks, I think you or even four, uh, you are expect to see them, expect to see Mew, expect to see some Arceus variant. It could be Arceus Lycanroc, it could be Arceus uh, Beedrill, it could be Arceus Inteleon, it could be whatever. You're gonna see that. You'll likely see Urshifu, and which spoilers, Urshifu is next. And before we get to it, we, you know, a couple of honorable mentions Arceus Lycanroc is one of them, and I feel like there was another one that I'm forgetting. Uh, Arceus Sylveon is another interesting one. I've seen some lists that are, are Shadow Rider, uh, Shadow Rider Whimsicott. There's, there's so many different decks, uh, especially Arceus variants out there, that just do really well. But here is the final deck that we're going to talk about, and that is Rapid Strike Urshifu Moltres. Yes, of course, we have the Inteleon line as well. And this one is using both Baby Moltres and Moltres V to really double down on uh, dealing with Mew because those are our main Mew attackers because we don't want to offer up a 2-3 prize Psychic Week Pokemon that's going to get knocked out pretty easily. Some lists will use the Snorlax with the Gourmand dies and some lists will use the Mysterious Tail Mew from Celebrations. It's just going to depend on the list that you found and which one works better for you. But again, we have those Averys to get rid of our opponent's bench. We have things like Clara to get that Moltres and some energies back so we can hit really hard. 
a bunch of scoop up nets and escape ropes so that we can again move Pokemon out of the active as needed. This one doesn't run Hoopa V, but I guess it's not really needed. We do have a Cheryl. Cheryl can be really, really annoying when used on a Rabbit Strike Urshifu because you G-Max Rapid Flow, you discard all the energies anyway. Then it takes damage on your next turn. You Cheryl, you heal all that damage, and then you can go ahead and just attach a basic fighting energy and boom, uh, you know, work some scoop up net escape rope stuff, scoop up net uh, tower of water, scoop up net retreat, whatever it is you're doing and hit with Gale Trust for 150. It's a very, very powerful deck. Now, one of the things you have to keep in mind with this deck is look at the number of one ofs you have. You have one Moltres V, one Crobat, one Snorlax, Research, Boss, Cheryl, Rhyhan, Sonya, Pierce, Clara, Tower, Palpad, Energy Retrieval, Energy Switch. I mean, you have so many one ofs that it is very hard to pilot this deck properly and you have to really take each step and use each card with a purpose there is no just play it just to play it because you don't have enough of things to just play you have to know each card's purpose when is the best time to use it and what are you going to get with each you know each search each drizzle each intellion and Understanding what you're attacking, mapping out your prizes, that is very, very important for this deck. It is probably one of the hardest decks to play that we've talked about at all. And it, it can be very, very powerful in the hands of a good player. And it can be, oh boy, it can be really, really difficult. And you might find yourself on the receiving end of quite the beating if you are inexperienced with this deck and you just decided, you know what? This deck won EUIC. Yes, this is Gustavo Wado's EUIC winning list. This is the one that won EUIC. So I'm going to bring this to Indy. And I, I played like 10 games with it. I know what I'm doing. Oh boy. You are going to be in for it. Maybe maybe round one or two you get away with it. You know, regionals, 1,200 people uh, at Indy anyway. Maybe you hit those newer players and, you know, th their nerves and their inexperience get the best of them. And you can take a win or two. But as you start getting into those later rounds, rounds three, four, and you know, that's when you're really going to start to feel the effects of this deck. It's a lot of decision making, a lot of thinking, and you got to play nine best of three with any deck that you choose. And so picking one that is very thought intensive, you have to be prepared for. And there we go. There is the top 10 decks for upcoming regionals indie in particular i suppose though if you haven't picked the deck for indie uh, please please pick one today uh, ideally one of these 10 or something that you are extremely comfortable with or something that you just really want to play if you want to show up playing durant you want to show up playing mad party you will you are absolutely welcome to you are do, you know do the best you can with it do the i hope you win but just get the practice in pick a deck and practice with it uh, you don't want to be changing your deck the night before, especially if it's something that you haven't really played. It's just, that's just the advice that I would have for you. You should be playing, getting reps in your, listen, you don't have to have the exact 60. You want to change it up a little bit as you're playing. Uh, maybe I don't need this. Maybe I want this. I've been seeing a lot of this. This has been doing really well. So I got to adjust for that. That's going to happen. But don't be like, um, yeah, you know what? I'm going to just try this Gustavo Water list because... I know I'm kind of ranting here, I'm just rambling, but I, I ask any seasoned player, that is not a good idea, especially with one of something like Mew, something like uh, the uh, the uh, Urshifu list that we just looked at. They are very thought-intensive decks, and if you do not have the sequencing down, if you do not have the practice, you will not do well with them. There's my warning. It's not really a warning. You're ultimately free and you should play whatever deck you want whatever makes you happy that's what you should play even if it's not on this list even if it's the the worst deck in the game if it's the best deck in the game none of it matters you play the thing that makes you the happiest right it's your tournament experience and no one gets to tell you how to how to like run your own tournament experience right as long as long as you're abiding by the spirit of the game you're playing by the rules and all that kind of stuff that obviously goes without saying but um 
I guess it doesn't because I said it. But either way, I'm 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 starting to to ramble, and I'm gonna end this. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Found something informative. If you did, subscribe, like, comment, all that kind of stuff. Um, maybe check out Nine Card Deck Rent. Maybe order something from Dragon Shield. Look to see what all the member perks are like. The, the members of, that I have are happy. And uh, lastly, you can become a Discord member, join the community. And yeah, that's gonna do it for us today. Thanks so much for watching. If you are participating in Indie, good, good luck. I wish you nothing but wins. And, you know, in the later stages, maybe an idea or two to make day two. If you're gonna go to New Jersey, I'll be in New Jersey too, and I want to meet you. So we'll talk about that as we get a little closer. But yes, that's gonna do it for us today. Thanks so much, and I will see you next time.